Hello, Wanderer. May I introduce you to the Keramikos, the kiln that warms all of Athens' pottery. My name is Aspasia. Though I am not originally from Athens, I have climbed to the top of its social ladder using my wit and intellect. I've even earned the love of Pericles, one of the most powerful men in the city. The mind truly is a beautiful thing. The art produced here is some of the most beautiful in the Greek world. <laughs> I envy the potter's skills, though I'm not quite as envious of their clay-stained hands. It's bad for the nails. The Keramikos was a special neighborhood in Athens, where potters created vases and containers that stood all over Greece. This tour will take you through the elaborate process needed to turn something as simple as muddy clay into ornate perfume vases and gilded wine cups. Come find me when you complete your visit, and we can talk more about what you've learned. The Keramikus was a large, sprawling area northwest of Athens' Acropolis. While part of it was used as a graveyard, it was also dedicated to the creation of pottery. The Keramikus was so significant to the art form that its name lives on in the word ceramics. Perhaps drawn by the river, potters moved into the area and formed their own bustling community. It's believed that by the end of the 5th century BCE, Hundreds of thousands of pottery vessels had been made in Athens, including everything from heavy, undecorated cooking pots to delicate and beautiful containers reserved for the most precious oils. Sadly, only around 1% of these works survive today, some only in small fragments. Raw clay from a river was hardly fit for a potter's wheel. Athenian potters used clay that was rich in iron, which created the distinctive orange-red coloring seen in Athenian pottery. But this high-quality clay needed to be handled carefully to avoid disasters in the kiln later on. The clay was first brought to settling beds, where it was mixed with water to wash out any organic debris like leaves. Once it was purified, workers kneaded the clay with their hands to push out air bubbles and create the texture necessary for a flawless finish. One of the goals of these early steps was to remove any impurities that could destroy a delicate design, or worse, render a vase unusable. Once the clay was cleaned, it was up to the potter to shape it into a vase by spinning it on a wheel or pressing it into a mold. Their choice depended on what shape they wanted for the vase, but they also considered the possible scope of its decoration. Potters did not work alone. A workshop might have had many people working together on different aspects of production. Potters collaborated with many different painters for decorating their creations. Some of these painters even became potters themselves. All in all, a single vase could be worked on by many different artists, with each one focusing on a different aspect of its design.
After the pots were shaped and decorated, they were packed into kilns for the lengthy and delicate firing process. The process had three stages, oxidation, reduction, and reoxidation. The main purpose of the firing process was to carefully manage the clay's exposure to oxygen. The chemical reactions caused by firing gave the pots their distinctive orange-red coloring. This also turned the designs made from the clay decoration slips glossy and black. The most difficult part of the firing process was managing the fires themselves. It required an enormous amount of skill and experience to properly judge the exact temperatures needed, and even the smallest mistake could ruin several hours of work. Vases could be decorated in all sorts of ways. Before 530 BCE, Athenian vases were decorated using the black figure technique, where figures and designs were painted as dark silhouettes. At the end of the 6th century BCE, painters created a new technique called red figure, an inversion of the painting process that left the figures in red and the background in black. This gave the artists more freedom to better explore details like muscles and individual locks of hair. Designs were sketched onto the bare surface of the pot using a thin, sharp tool. Thin relief lines, which helped define subtle elements like facial features, were added using a brush made of a few stiff hairs. More elaborate vases were sometimes gilded, but these decorations were so delicate, they were most likely only added after the firing process. You've returned! As you can see, pottery was an arduous and delicate process, but was exemplary of the skill and craftsmanship that dominated Greek art and culture. Now, is there something else you'd like to do? Then let's get right to it, starting with an easy question. What was responsible for the orange-red color of most Athenian vases? Paint was not the main source of the vase's distinctive coloring. Try again. Organic debris-like leaves were actually filtered out of the clay early on in the process. Keep trying. Thankfully, potters never resorted to such barbarism to color their work. At least, I hope not. Correct! Athenian potters worked with clay that was rich with iron, and that iron created a distinctive orange-red coloring. On to the next question. What were the chambers for firing pottery called? No. Settling beds were where the clay was purified. Try a different answer. A frigatron is a special tool for roasting barley. Keep trying. What were the chambers for firing pottery called? No, that would be rather inelegant, simply throwing clay into a fire. Try again. Correct. Pottery was fired in kilns, and the firing process was extremely precise and delicate in nature. You're almost done. Just one more question. The firing process was made up of how many stages? No, it was much too complicated to be relegated to one stage. Try again. The firing process was not made up of five stages. Keep trying. No, that's too many steps. Even for something as complex as the firing process. Pick another answer. 
Correct. The three stages of the firing process were oxidation, reduction, and reoxidation. You know your pottery. Well done, Wanderer. Then we must part ways, at least for now. Farewell, Wanderer. <laughs>